Okay, I've designed a adapter, I guess you can call it. 150mm down to 100mm for the new red and black laser cutter to be able to use the air exhaust from the big pipe to my small extraction, which is only 100mm wide. I'm thinking what I might do is use a large extraction out to the new extraction fan that came with this laser cutter and then pump that into the small one which pulls it up to the roof of my garage so the small one will be able to pull through the congestion that comes from the big one. I'm hoping, otherwise I'll have to cut a bigger hole in the roof. Anyway, this is going to take seven hours to print. This is obviously the first layer right now, which is always much slower to print. Just to make sure it sticks and then it'll speed up. But yeah, it's going to take a while. I've been rearranging the garage. I figured you didn't want to see me actually clean up the garage. I've pulled the K40 mostly apart. There's the water cooler. That's the extraction fan that goes up to my roof. But it doesn't go out the roof, it goes out the side wall. And there's a, an exhaust outlet on the other side. So basically all the stuff that was in here is now gone. And surprisingly, although it might not look like it, this laser cutter is going to fit inside there even with the water chiller on the ground on the side here. It's going to be a very tight fit. It's going to be like two centimeters leeway. And then I've shifted over the little arcade cabinet and so the overhang for the laser cutter will just go over that section there and I've got more room. I can push it all over if I need to. So the idea is this will actually finally sit in the corner like the K40 was always supposed to, but I never got around to doing. So yeah, I'm quite excited to get this in. Uh, Alan's on the way down still, and once he's down and looked over it all, I think it's time to put it all together. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to wait for my air extraction adapter to be able to extract air properly. But for now, what I can do is just hook up the blue hose to there which is this massive hose here and I'll just use the air extractor that came with the unit and blow it out the garage door for now just so I can start cutting and testing with it just checking that it fits and it does with hopefully enough room there for the chiller I believe it's going to fit just behind the edge for the door there's an extra three centimeters there yeah, I have to work out how this is going to work because once it's in, it's going to be really hard to get to the back if I need to. And of course, the water level for the water chiller is actually at the back. Just here. Little gauge. So, it's going to be very hard to check that once it's in. Hopefully, there'll be enough room behind. I might just stick a light in there. My biggest concern right now, it started off nice and sunny this morning and no clouds, but now it's pretty dark clouds. So I'm really hoping that uh, Alan will get here soon so we can get this done and I can get all the rest of this stuff back inside the garage. Plenty of room to store it right now, but if it starts raining, it's gonna get very crowded in here. If I have to move everything back in before we go over the wiring. Okay, what an absolute effort. But it's in and it's all connected. It's actually running, or the laser itself is not on, not powered up. But the water cooler chiller is running right now. I did the air exhaust, I didn't end up using the 3D print, still printing. I've got it going to the pump that came with it because. Oh my gosh, does that push air, 20 times more air than my other one did. And then I've just made a, an adapter from the blue one to the black one, just with gaffer tape. Lots of gaffer tape. Alan helped me with that. And then it goes out to the roof. So the exhaust is working. The water chilling is in and pumping water. No errors. See it's already gone down to uh, 17 degrees, you can see that. I've got a, a power board in there which I use to turn everything on and off including the air pump. Right now the laser itself 
although it hasn't been turned on, is the power cable is going up to a power board on the side. I want to get a, a longer cable or an extension and make that go around the back to the power board. So the power board is one master switch for everything that gets turned on and off. And then individually I can turn components on and off. So the Perspect covering has been removed, as you can see, I can see inside now. A couple of little scratches and dings on the frame. The air is working. Sorry, the laser is not turned on. The air is working. Um, taking off all the ribbons that were holding all of the guide belts. So it's ready to be turned on and tested. Thanks very much, Alan, for your help. Oh, by the way, the wiring was fine. Checked everything, everything's earthed, grounded. I've got good news and bad news, folks. Oh, boy. So, the good news is, it powers up. There's the controller. You can see inside there, a little laser pointer to show where the cut mark's gonna be. It moves around, it homes itself and everything, which is great. The bad news is, ready for this one? The software I use, Lightburn, which is obviously Mac, PC, and Linux, and use a Mac, is not compatible with the controller in this laser cutter yet. It's been worked on. So this uses a, a DSP controller, and the model that's in here, the TL410C, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a, you know, great DSP controller, apparently, but they've only just started working on the port for this particular controller about five or six weeks ago and it's not finished yet and it normally takes them about two or three months to decompile the way the controller works and be able to fully control it. They have a machine with that particular controller in their office and they're working on it but until they ship an update with support I can't use this laser cutter and what's worse is to get this laser cutter in here and working the way I wanted it to like this I have completely removed the ability to use my K40 anymore, which means I currently cannot do any laser cutting until this issue is resolved. So did I know I was going to get an incompatible controller? Well, no, I didn't. The controller listed on the eBay listing was just a DSP controller, and Lightburn actually works with a bunch of DSP controllers. This just seems to be a lot of versions of DSP controllers, and this particular one isn't released yet. So, wow, this does not have a happy ending. <laughs> not right now. This is a, a very expensive piece of art installation right now. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm super happy I've got it all installed so nicely and it fits in place where I want it to, but I can't use it right now. I mean, I could probably get the software that comes with it, some auto laser, something or other, fired up and working with a PC. Because I'm pretty sure the software is PC only. Um, I could possibly export DXFs, and then from the DXF, I could probably plug it into the USB port there, the U disk, and then run it from here. That is a possibility. I'd have to learn how to use all this. I was hoping to just bypass this. Unfortunately, for some reason, uh, when I export DXS from Lightburn, they don't work. There's nothing inside them. So I'd have to set up completely different templates out of Fusion. So there might be a way I can get this up and running, but my current pipeline is Fusion 360 and Lightburn on a Mac, and that's not possible right now. So there you go, folks. It's not the eBay seller's fault. I can't blame them. Uh, I can't blame myself. Although I can, I guess I can blame myself, but I didn't know what controller was gonna be in, in here until it turned up. I made an assumption about the DSP controllers and I was fairly close. Not that it makes any difference, but I'm not the only one that made this mistake. There's quite a few people on the Lightburn support forum on Facebook with the same problem. They've got, oh look at that. They've got laser cutters with these controllers and they can't use them. It is being worked on. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just not compatible yet. I'll continue this journey, let everyone know what's happening as new information evolves. Hopefully I'll hear something overnight tonight from the Lightburn support people, because they're in the States. And there might be some good news, it might only be a week or so away, hopefully. 
hopefully it won't be a January or February type time frame because that would really suck. Four hours and a Windows PC and some really crappy software. Three of those four hours it was cutting backwards as in flipped on the X so everything was reversed but it's now cutting. So I've got this cutting at 15 millimeters per second which is three times faster than I was cutting on my K40 and I reckon I could adjust this and get it a little bit faster as well. I've just been going for pretty reliable cuts right now. This is the first time I'm doing a whole sheet. It's pretty exciting. So far, if this sheet works, I can cut at least three times faster than I was cutting before. And that's at 80%. Ideally, you don't want to run your laser at 100%. It just wears out the, the tune quickly. You want to keep the laser temperature as low as possible for the cuts you're doing. And there's an, actually a, a sweet spot between speed and power. So it might actually work out that I can get it to cut faster by dropping the power slightly. Anyway, I'm uh, relieved that I can use the laser cutter because I couldn't put the K40 back together. A bit disappointed that I have to uh, use this pretty average software, I have to say. It's not what I'm used to and I'm stuck running in Windows land, which obviously doesn't make me very happy, but I'm cutting. And at least I can cut now while I wait for the updated light burn version that's going to support this laser cutter. So it uh, actually shows the preview on the controller and then once you've fed a file to the laser it actually stays there in the file system. So if I want to go back and cut a sheet of this again I can actually call it up from the file system and then just cut it without having to actually go back to the PC which is kind of nice. I don't know how much memory is inside of it, I'd like to find out. So there we go, we're cutting. A happy ending after all. Surprise, surprise. Okay, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that like button. Hi to all my current subscribers. Big cheers to my patrons. Catch you later. Bye.